Let's talk ClickUp automations. Hey guys, Christy here from DeSilva Life and welcome back to our channel. If you're new around here, I'm Christy, a vetted ClickUp consultant, CEO and founder of DeSilva Life. And I am so excited that you're here because I love ClickUp. But something to truly maximize your ClickUp setup is the use of their native automations. Now, as you're diving into ClickUp, this is something that may not seem necessary, but there are really simple ways that you can automate specific things that really make it so much easier. So in this video today, I just wanna go through a few of my favorite automations from simple to a little bit more complex so you can kind of dip your toes in and just start getting used to the idea of ClickUp automations and maybe even set up a few for yourself today. So with that, let's dive in to the ClickUp automations tutorial. So in the training, I want to go over ClickUp automations and we're going to go through five automations just to get your wheels turning on how you can automate different things within ClickUp. Before we do that, I want to just give a brief overview into automations and the ClickUp hierarchy. Okay, so you can create an automation by always clicking on this top right automate button right here. You can also click into the settings and then manage the automations in there. So list settings, automations. Now you can create an automation at the list level, folder level, and the space level. So what that means is, say you're setting an automation that's when a task status goes from anything to ready for review, reassign that task to a specific person. If you put that on the marketing platforms level, that means any time a task in blog, email, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn gets moved into that ready for review status, it's going to always assign that person and trigger that automation. Now you wanna make sure you don't have automations that are canceling each other out, right? So you don't have that automation on the folder level and also an automation in the email marketing list when something gets set to ready for review, then it reassigns a different person. But if you know that that automation is going to be the same for every single list and folder underneath the space or every single list underneath the folder, go ahead and put it on that highest level so you don't have to keep creating that automation. Now for us, for example, our marketing platforms, every list kind of has a different set of assignees and different things going on. So we set them at the list level because someone who reviews email may be different than the person that reviews LinkedIn or Facebook, etc. So I wanted to mention that hierarchy tip for you. Also, this entire content calendar bundle is available within our content calendar bundle. This has a workflow for every single platform and we'll make sure to link it in the description below. And so let's click into this automations. Now when you click automate, you can either add these custom automations or you can click always assign task to or always add watchers. So these are two really quick automations to say, okay, anytime a task is added in this list, I want to assign the specific person or people and then always add watchers. If you're not sure what watchers are, Watchers are essentially who's gonna be having eyes on this task and being notified of everything that's happened. Assignee change, due date change, comment, status change, all that good stuff. So you can add two quick automations there or you can click add automation. You can go into browse and see the different categories of all the things that you can do. When a task is moved to this location, change the status. When the status changes, then change the list things triggering from due dates. You can also see the email. You can say when the status changes, send an email to a specific person or people. So there's so many things you could do. If you wanna get some inspiration, feel free to go into these categories. But we are going to now dive into five specific ClickUp automations to get your wheels turning and get you started on using these native automations for your business. Okay, first example, 
when the status changes, so let's use the example of our Instagram workflow. When this gets set to ready for review, we want it to assign me with a due date of two days later. Now I'm gonna show you another option for the same type of idea with subtasks. So you'll see that in a second, but let's go through creating this automation. So I'm gonna go into add automation and then do create automation. So you can see all the different triggers here, right? Status changes, priority, due date, start date, assignee, all this good stuff. Make sure to check that out. And then you can see the actual action. Change assignee, create a task, create a subtask, etc. You can do so many things with their native automations. So I'm gonna say when the status changes from any to ready for review, I am going to reassign myself now let's talk about the difference between changing assignees. You can add an assignee, remove an assignee, reassign or remove all assignees. It's common that people get confused between add assignee and reassign. Add assignee is going to say, okay, Jeff is already assigned to this, did this thing, now he moved it to ready for review and we wanna add Christy. So now Jeff and Christy are added to this task reassign is going to take off anyone that was on the task and then put who you choose here. So now Jeff is going to be off this task. I'm going to be added, right? So this is great for team communication when you want someone did their job, they're moving the status, the task is now off their hands, off of their calendar, right? And then remove assignees just takes off everyone or you can remove specific assignees. Then I want to add another action. Now note, this is not available on all plans to do multi-step automation. So if you're getting that you cannot do this message, you want to make sure that you're on the right plan if you want to do specific automations. Now I will say you can always do, if you're not ready to upgrade, we're going to do in this two steps. When the status change is ready for review, reassign Christy and change the due date. If you don't have the other plan, you can just make two automations. When a status changes to ready for review, reassign Christy. Another automation, when the status changes to ready for review, change due date. Okay, so then we're gonna say change due date. And I'm gonna do, you could do days after trigger date, on trigger date, fields from trigger, or choose a specific date. So days after trigger date, I'm just gonna say, okay, when this goes into ready for review, I wanna give myself two days to be able to see this on my calendar now and get to it within the next two days. If you wanted to do on trigger date, that would be that specific day. Field from trigger, this would be if you have a, a custom field date. So if we did publish date, you note you can't do like five days before publish date or after, you can only make it that specific date. Um, or you can do choose a specific date. Okay, so I want to do change, uh, sorry, want to do days after trigger date too. Okay, so I'm gonna create this. I always recommend adding a description as well. So when status changes to ready for review, reassign Christy with due date of two days later. Okay, so now you can see when we're in the automations what this is actually doing because there may be eight or 10 or however many in here. You wanna make sure you know what that automation does. From there, you can always edit it, delete it, or turn it off as well. Okay, so let me show you how this actually works. Okay, let's say this was in progress and it was due to Jeff for today. Then, when I go ahead and move this to ready for review, and then I'm going to refresh the page, you're gonna see what happens. So now this is going to have me reassigned with a due date of two days later. So that is it for the first automation. Super simple, but you can see how an example of having different things where different team members are responsible for each stage 
then it's able to put the task in their hands with without the assignee having to assign it to that person manually. ClickUp's doing the work. So that's an example. We do that ready for review. Someone on the team gets assigned two days later, needs edits, it gets reassigned back to the person who's in charge of the creation process, ready to schedule, also gets assigned to the person who is responsible for scheduling. So that is the first automation example. Let's move on to the next one. Now let's move on to another example of instead of just adding the assignee to and due date to that parent task, what if you wanted to add a subtask with the assignee and due date? For example, let's do instead, I'll turn off this automation. When the status changes from any to ready for review, then you create a subtask and you say review and then these are some smart fields. So we can say review task name, or you can say review IG post, and then this is gonna be the name of that IG post. Then you're gonna say add assignee Christy, same thing, due date of two days later, and create. So now instead of adding them to the parent task, so on my calendar, instead of it just saying SOPs and workflows, let me show you what happens now. So let me move this back to a different status. I'm gonna take off that due date, and then we'll say, okay, ready for review. So now you're gonna see if I refresh the page. Okay, now we have a subtask, review IG post SOPs versus workflows, Christy, two days later. So instead of just having that on my calendar, again, review IG post is gonna be on my calendar and then I'm able to mark this off as complete and then do what I will with this task. So that's a different option if you don't wanna assign the parent tasks, but you wanna add subtasks. Now you can also do this for a series of subtasks. So if I did this, say it was the status changes or a task was created. You can then say create a subtask to do task one, assign to Christy. Add another subtask to do task two. Say this was like onboarding a client or something like that. And then this one's gonna be assigned to Jeff for a due date of three days after the trigger date. So you can have a series of multiple subtasks triggering depending on what your purpose is for this automation. But I want to show you that you can create a subtask on that original parent task as an option as well. Now I want to give an automation with an example of a form being submitted. So this gets into a little bit of the advanced features. So this is our hiring workflow, again, available in our shop. I'll make sure to link it in the description below, where we have essentially this job application form that's a public link. You don't need a ClickUp account. So basically, the position you're hiring for, you can have this out on any platform, embedded on your website, where someone can find this and fill out this job application. So when they fill it out, we want to create an automation to review that application. So what you can do is come into here and you can say, let's actually do this from scratch. When a task is created, so when this form gets filled out, there's going to be a task created in that ClickUp list. So what we want to do is then click into that advanced editor and say, but this task was only created from the form submission. You can also do from templates, automations, and users, but this is saying, okay, I can create any other task manually, but I only want this to happen if this is a form submission. Then we could do the same thing. Let's create a subtask that you want to review new application and then task name assign this to Christy and let's do a due date of one day later. Okay, so now I'm gonna create this. I'm gonna grab this form link and I'm going to fill in this form really quick and then show you what happens. Okay, so I've gone ahead and filled in this information. Now I'm going to click submit 
and let's see what happens in, okay, so submit, thank you. Now let's see what happens in the application list. So now we have John Doe is now in the application submitted status and there's a subtask review new application, John Doe, and it is assigned to me with a due date of tomorrow. So that's an example of how you can create a, an automation to do something when a ClickUp form is submitted. Okay, now let's do an example of if you have all these different subtasks to do for a specific task, once they are completed, you want it to move on to the next status or phase or whatever it may be. So let's say in the email marketing, for this we have to outline email topic, we have to get topic approved, we have to um, draft email, or no, the drafting would be in, in progress, um, and choose the send date, okay? So once all these things are done, then we can say, okay, this is ready to be moved to in progress. So how we would automate this is by creating an automation that when the all subtasks are resolved, okay, but we want to make sure it doesn't just move it to in progress every time all subtasks are resolved. So we have to add a condition. So all subtasks are resolved, but the status is to create, then we want to change the status to in progress, okay? So let me create this automation. And now watch what happens when I resolve all these subtasks. So now we got the topic approved. Now we're gonna choose the send date. Now watch what happens to this email. Because we did all of those tasks, I'll refresh the page. Also with automation, sometimes they don't, it's not like an instant trigger. It might take like 10 seconds. I always just recommend refreshing the page and there it is in, in progress. So you can do this with any of the different statuses when it's in progress and we drafted the email and did this and did this, move it to ready for review, et cetera. And lastly, let's actually stick with this email example. Let's say we want to say, okay, in these uh, marketing workflows, every time we have a new email task or an Instagram, et cetera, we have a series of subtasks that have to get done. We also want to make sure that description, you can see how we lay out the descriptions, is in there. So what you could do here is you can click in to save this to the template center. So let's save this as a template, um, email marketing template example. Oh, whoops. Template center, save as template, email marketing template example, save. And now you'll say, let me actually turn the one automation off in here because that's actually what we did when task is created. So what you can do now is say, when a task is created in this list, let's go ahead and apply a template. So now we're gonna choose that email marketing template example, click use template. So now anytime we go and create, so this is the new email subject line, then it's going to upload this template. And there it is. So now we have the description in here with the three subtasks. So that is it for the ClickUp Automations tutorial. I wanted to give you five quick examples, give you a good introduction into the power that ClickUp Automations has for your business because why do things manually or have team members, relying on team members to be able to do things and change assignees when ClickUp can just do it for you.
So I hope that was helpful for you in learning a little bit more about ClickUp automations, whether you are brand new and have never set up one automation or you have set up a few in the past. I hope this was helpful for you and gave you a little bit of inspiration on how you can apply it to your business and your ClickUp. We actually have so many more ClickUp tutorials and advanced automations videos in our System School membership. If you have not been able to check out our System School membership yet, I will drop the link in the description below so you can check it out. But basically, it's the bomb.com. We have an entire course on ClickUp, every bell and whistle, an entire template vault with dozens of templates to plug and play right into your business, and a whole entire community of support where myself, the DL team, and a ton of other business owners are in there collaborating. We're supporting you with any specific questions you have. It is the place to be if you're wanting to really set up your business systems, organize and automate your business, and really grow with ease. So I will link the System School membership in the description below if you want to check it out. And make sure if you like this video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you have not already because we have so many other ClickUp tutorials that could be really helpful for you. With that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and we'll see you next time.